i7-870. It's one of the first i7 processors that Intel has made. It came out in 2009 and it's already 15 years old. Now, a lot of people may think that a 15-year-old CPU is far too old and it'll struggle to play anything in 2024, but you'll be amazed by how much it can actually do. To test our CPU, we'll be using this P7 P55D Pro motherboard from Asus, 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 3060. Now I know that RTX 3060 is not the most powerful GPU, but it's the most powerful one I have at the moment and it should be enough to show the full potential of the CPU. So without any further ado, let's head over to the benchmarks and see what this CPU is capable of. As usual, let's begin with CS2. We are running this game at 1080p high settings, and right off the bat we are getting a solid 60fps. Of course it's nothing to be amazed by, but bear in mind that this is a modern title and the CPU is 15 years old. I think it deserves a bit of praise because there aren't that many CPUs that can run games at 60fps 15 years later. Right now we are in a deathmatch and there's a lot more stuff being loaded here than in competitive matches. So if anything, you're gonna get even more FPS in a regular game. The overall responsiveness of the game is actually pretty good. If you have a 60 or 70 Hz monitor, you pretty much will be playing at your desired frame rate because this CPU won't really be able to achieve any more FPS than this, but it'll be good 60 to 70 FPS. GTA 5 ran pretty good on this old i7. The graphics are set to high at 1080p resolution. In this game I saw no stutters or drops in FPS whatsoever. Of course GTA 5 is not the most recent game, but a lot of people still play it even to this day and I was curious to see how this i7 would perform and as we see it is performing flawlessly, the game is running as smooth as it can get. After driving around for good 20 minutes, we averaged a solid 60 to 80 FPS. World of Warcraft is another old title that I wanted to test before I moved on to something more recent. Even though this game has received hundreds of updates, it's still technically old and it still runs pretty well. Here we chose ultra settings because the game is not that demanding. The FPS never went below 100 and it was a smooth experience all around. The 1% and 0.1% lows that you guys are seeing is mainly caused from opening and closing the tabs in the game because that's just the way this game works. The gameplay had no stutters whatsoever. Which I cannot say about Fortnite. This game was a stutter fest. No matter what graphics we chose, no matter if it was performance mode or modern DirectX 12 graphics, the game just kept on stuttering. This was extremely noticeable when you were dropping from the ship. On the ground it wasn't as bad, but it was still a pretty big problem. In a game like this, ideally you don't want any stutter, but no matter how long or how many matches I played, the stutter just didn't go away. I guess if you wanna play Fortnite, you really need a modern processor because this one sure as hell cannot handle it. Not without stutter at least. Doom Eternal on the other hand was the total opposite of Fortnite. This i7 seems to be running the game without any issues at 1080p ultra settings. I actually have yet to see a hardware that will stutter in this game. It's honestly built really well. The FPS never went below 100, even when there was a lot of action on the screen. For a 15 year old CPU it's pretty damn amazing. The gaming experience will be so much better if the developers create more games like this because a lot of people just take it as granted that they're able to buy modern, expensive hardware every year. Some users are just not able to upgrade their hardware as often as you might think. Nowadays it's all about modern flagship hardware that costs thousands of dollars, but the reality is that a lot of people will never be able to buy them. Look at it like this, someone could be upgrading to this 15 year old i7 because their system is even weaker than this, hence why I always make videos about older hardware. I was never fortunate enough to have a high end system, so I understand what it feels like to game on lowest of low end hardware. The voiceover that you guys are hearing is recorded with my phone. It might not seem like it cause I edit everything and try to make it sound as good as possible, but that's the way I do it because that's the only resource that is available to me. I learned how to make the most out of what I have because I've never had a lot to begin with. I'll probably be making a lot of videos about how to get the most out of cheap hardware and how to use the environment and the small amount of resources that is available to you to make things better, but that's something we'll be discussing in another video, so let's get back to testing our i7. In Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p high settings we're getting around 70fps. 
The game feels smooth and I didn't see a single stutter throughout this benchmark. In the actual game, however, you'll get even more FPS because there will be fewer cars and the CPU will have less things to load. Besides, I don't really play this game all that much anyway and whenever I wanna test hardware, I always use this built-in benchmark instead because it's a lot more taxing than the actual gameplay. And of course, our last game will be Cyberpunk. I chose high settings here as well at 1080p resolution. Inside the buildings we averaged around 60 FPS because the CPU didn't have to load anything other than what was inside, but outside the FPS dropped to low 30s, the gameplay became a lot more stuttery and I started seeing frequent FPS drops. But all things considered, I'm still amazed that this 15 year old CPU is still doing so great in so many games despite its old architecture. Nobody knew that 4 cores and 8 threads would last so long. Like even to this day, 4 cores and 8 threads is plenty enough for any modern game. Take the i3 14100F as an example, it can run any game without any issues whatsoever. Of course, the more cores and threads the CPU has, the better it will be, but we're still a few years early on claiming that anything more than 4 cores and 8 threads is required to have a smooth and enjoyable gaming experience. On that note, let's wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.